welcome to uh, the second season of the Funky Marketing Show uh, with guests. So this time we're not going to talk that much about, you know, about the history, about what's happening with, with our guests in the past, but we're going to go through, uh, do it a little bit differently. And we're going to go and talk about, uh, you know, things that they are doing, things that they are working. Uh, we're going to share some recipes about what's working. And, you know, maybe we're going to predict some things and we'll certainly call out some bullshit. So that's that's how it goes. Uh, and today I have a pleasure to, to welcome uh, my friend Ognjen Boskovic. Um, I won't tell that much about him because he will he will go into details about that. But I want to start with you know uh, right in the head because whenever you you see uh, Ognjen's post on LinkedIn, on Facebook, in Facebook groups, uh, all you can see is you know 135k ARR in uh, like around four months. So, uh, Ogen, let's dive right into that and we'll talk about you and the company a little bit later. So, uh, you know, how do you reach those goals? Hey, Nemanja, thanks for <clears throat> having me. Uh, I, honestly, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed with your the first thing you said. You said no history and history is basically how I ended up in, in marketing. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm running marketing or you know growth uh, at uh, content distribution we're an agency and uh, a SaaS business as well and I'm mostly working on the SaaS side and uh, that's now almost almost a year ago uh, some nine months ago we launched our uh, keyword clustering tool cluster AI and I was pretty much the only uh, full-time person on it besides the uh, you know, a developer, freelance developer. And as a, you know, one man marketing team, uh, we grew uh, from zero to 135K ARR in precisely 135 days or, you know, four and a half months. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, let me, let me touch briefly on, on what were the main, you know, activities or what the stra strategy was. So, uh, my CEO, Nick Jordan, uh, you had him on this podcast as well. And, no, actually, uh, actually we, didn't, we didn't have Nick on the podcast. He, he didn't appear yet on the podcast, but I'm sure we'll have him in, in this uh, or, yeah, or yeah, the yeah, next yeah. season. You had some, some kind of a article you wrote together, something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. he, he did an interview uh, and he was on the Funky Marketing Top Voices least uh, last December. Yeah, you, you have so much <clears throat> different pillars of content, I cannot keep track of them. So that's good, that's good. Uh, anyway, uh, so the, the thing that allowed me to, to scale us pretty fast was uh, the positioning and messaging was already pretty much developed. Uh, and we had case studies slash content ready for, you know, further distribution and so uh sorry for interrupting you so uh when you came into the company you already have messaging and the differentiation uh done right by by nick yeah you, you can argue that it's never done uh but uh, it was pretty maturely developed uh let's call it that way and you know my uh one of the tasks i had was to you know uh, perfect it and uh, you know uh, use my you know, copywriting skills to to take it to maybe the next level but you know the the main foundation of it was there which is uh, you know a, a marketer's job is way easier when you know the the overall positioning strategy is is there and when also the messaging is is quite developed so it was it was way easier for me to do what I had to do uh, with that kind of setup, and uh, and you know if if I have to uh, you know give you in one sentence the answer to how how we did it, it's it's pretty much content distribution. Uh, the company is also named content distribution, so I'm not uh, referring to the company. Uh, I'm referring to the process of distributing content wherever your audience is. 
And, uh, you know, in, in, in simple terms, I had, let's say, nine to 10 pieces of content that we wanted to distribute. Three or four of those were case studies. And we had some badass case studies, such as uh, do not phase growth from zero to half a million uh, monthly organic visits in, in uh, something like 16 months. And, uh, and then my job was to, you know, uh, repurpose that content, chop it up, uh, distribute all over the place. Uh, in our case, that mostly meant uh, LinkedIn and Facebook. And then we also had a strong pillar in uh, email marketing, which we still use as mostly a content distribution platform rather than you know a sales uh, sales platform. You know. Yeah, cool. So, so basically what you're saying is, you know, you got a couple of clients, you get them to results to where uh, you want to get them. And then you put all those into case studies and just, you know, the point was just to show it to the people. Like here, we know what we are talking about. We know what we can do. And here are the examples, you know, and basically make it visible for everybody to remember that you are the ones who can do it i i still remember like the screenshots that were all over the linkedin from uh you and the rest of the team so basically you know from uh from g analytics uh and other other tools like just showing uh the fed graphs how everything goes and you know then explaining uh the way you got there yeah so i i came up with kind of a mantra for for what we are doing and it works uh, perfectly regardless of whether you're uh, you know, a SaaS business or an agency and so on. And, and the mantra is do a good job, document the process, and then distribute that. And uh, we literally did just that. And uh, a few people asked me, uh, because you know, uh, most agencies, yours is, for example, an exception, uh, but uh, most agencies, uh, keep their, you know, processes, especially those that yield best results, but they keep those processes and strategies to themselves and uh, never, never share them. And mostly it's, it's out of fear that, you know, oh, someone's going to steal our tricks of the trade and, uh, you know, we, we're going to lose all the edge we have and so on. And, you know, it's, it's quite the contrary uh, and uh, and we we had an enormous demand for our agency services, which we failed to you know uh, failed to make worthwhile because we just don't have that much capacity. We're growing already quite fast as an agency, but simply don't have capacity for uh, most projects. And then also reflected uh, on the growth of the SaaS. So yeah, uh, if if I could give advice to anyone wants to create content or you know just run a business uh share as much as you can because that's the way you demonstrate your expertise and uh and you know uh a demonstration led marketing is is what i'm thinking more and more of you know instead of instead of showing a, a use case of your product uh and basically you know well, what that really means is you're uh, defining a different different types of your audience, uh, different ICPs, and then you're you know uh, the the way I see when, when people use use cases is they are just making their targeting uh, public, and uh, what I prefer to do instead of that is instead of a use case create a case study, and make it as useful as possible for your for the consumer, you know, of that content. Uh, if if you can take someone from uh, zero to a hundred in your in your case study, show them what the entire process looks like, and show them how to go through it, and uh, you know what the outcomes will be, uh, and share as much as as you can. That's that's the number one marketing strategy for me, uh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, basically, it's going back to the basics, right? Doing the basics right and just showing out to the world. Uh, I agree with you that not many agencies are actually sharing what they're doing. I mean, 
uh, working with so many of them and talking with so many of them, I know that majority of them don't even have those processes that they can share uh, because like majority of the agency are, are just doing, you know, like basic advertising and posting on social media, but they can get you the results as well, right? If you do it, if you do it the right way, like posting on social media is also distribution or, uh, you know, like doing basic advertising can help you distribute the content. It's all depending on in which context are you doing it. Uh, so um, tell me one thing, like when, uh, when you first started and when you were thinking about, you know, the strategy, how you go with that, uh, which channels did you use? How did you come up with that? Did you, you know, look at where your customers are and go went from there? Because like we are all in the B2B SaaS space more or less. Uh, or did you think, you know, like what are some channels where you are maybe, when you have maybe the, the strongest presence? Uh, did, you, did you have to make that choice or it was the same place? So yeah, we were kind of active on, on Facebook already. Uh, I mean, mostly CEO was, and uh, we had a 300 member community, uh, something like that, in, inside the Facebook group. So we were kind of uh, already on Facebook, but you know, not, not much traction, not much activity and so on. And, and then I, you know, pushed LinkedIn and we, we got, got on LinkedIn. The way I think about it, you know, uh, people, people always say, say, you know, do it where your audience is. Obviously that's, that's you know, way too obvious to, to even uh, offer as an advice. Uh, but, you know, people, people tend to think, uh, okay, so I'm working with, uh, you know, founders. I want to work with founders and, uh, you know, marketers and they are not on Facebook, they are on LinkedIn. Like everyone is everywhere. Uh, that founder is also on Instagram, a uh, bunch of people on Reddit too, uh, a bit creepy people uh, often on Reddit, but let's let's stick with LinkedIn and Facebook for now. So uh, yeah, uh, if if I could have enough time and and uh, you know capacity, I would I would uh, try to distribute content everywhere, as long as it's you know uh, not taking too much effort. Uh, and uh, the the number one thing I, I, I think is important is to pick one or two platforms. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, one probably ha has to be social media. For me, that's LinkedIn because LinkedIn has that compounding effect and definitely has uh, way better reach when done properly than the most other. Uh, but you could probably, you know, I, I, I would argue that you can probably uh, achieve similar uh, good growth on Facebook if you just follow the, the similar playbook, which is, you know, actually provide good content and engage with people, which, you know, most most of that stuff just sums up to, to those two things. And uh, yeah, definitely LinkedIn because, it, you know, has biggest returns, I'd say. And, uh, and then I try to distribute uh, content beyond that, which means Facebook, and read it occasionally. And I think you need to have some kind of a owned platform alongside the, the, the one main social media platform that's not owned by you. For me, that's that's uh, email. Uh, I run a newsletter. For you, it's, you know, a podcast uh, as the, the, the main one. Uh, you know, Chris Walker has also the podcast. So I think a combination of one uh, public channel uh, where you can kind of exponentially grow. You, ha you have that potential at least and uh, an owned platform that you, uh, you know, you will have it wh whatever happens and you have that one-on-one -on -one, uh, communication with, with the rest of the world. Yeah, so um, hmm. let's, uh, let's now talk a little bit about the background because I guess this is the reason why you have chosen the, the newsletter, right? because of your copywriting skills and uh, because of your background, how did you get actually to this position? You know, like, how did you start actually? Yeah, so yeah, you and I used to argue about, you know, written or, or uh, video content. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's, uh, it's an interesting debate to be had 
but it's also you know an endless debate because uh, at the end of the day I'll pick what suits my skills you'll pick what suits yours that that's kind of I feel that's that's the number one uh, uh, reason why someone picks anything and uh, and yeah writing is is how I uh, started with marketing uh, obviously it used to be content writing and, and that kind of stuff uh, I got bored with that so I, I I discovered copywriting and that was that was uh, you know uh, yeah, you, you got you got hooked by by you know uh, by the result, right? What's yeah, happening yeah, after? Because yeah. in content, in content writing, it can be different kind of things as a result. It's not always a sale or you know the final the final sale, the big ask. It can be you know the branding. It can be you know PR. It can be all kind of different things. Yeah, the, the reason I moved from content writing to copywriting, and then also from copy to marketing and marketing to let's say growth is is the same and that's you know to my, my number one goal as a as a marketer is to uh own the process so i can own the outcome you know uh you you are expected to create outcomes i mean it's good if you are expected it, it's 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 not good if if uh you know your uh your execs are not expecting uh, results or they are just expecting, you know, impressions and, and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, I, I actually come from direct response marketing and, and, and copywriting uh, in, you know, mostly in B2C, also a bit in B2B, now fully in, in, in B2B. And uh, and yeah, it's, it's all numbers to me. Uh, but I think the, the, the thing where a lot of marketing struggles with today is how to connect the uh, outcome with the activity and it's you know performance marketing is or direct response marketing makes most sense because you can track everything uh, but uh, it's it's uh, you can still get big outcomes by not doing you know things that are attributable or that are performance based so uh yeah a combination of, of direct response tactics and good copywriting with stuff i used to hate like branding and and, and you know that kind of stuff uh it is now my biggest you know thing yeah i, th I think like uh, people when they do performance marketing they they basically just do things that they can measure you know and, and that limits uh, limits them and they are stuck in, in a bubble kind of and if they allow themselves to do also the things that that can't scale that they cannot measure like creating relationships with people uh, then you know they can go wider okay they will always have performance marketing and they will always measure some of the things but in a different way like you need to feel the emotion you need to feel the energy you know and you can actually feel what's what's going to happen in the measurements if you can uh you know look outside of that of that bubble of just going after the things and actually doing only the things that you can measure right i i think you you mm -hmm. are also doing doing that as well by you know by doing the distribution by you know by getting into meaningful conversations and you know also provoking people with some of the things that you are doing in a different way than the others are doing in the old-fashioned way right and you are still getting the results yeah i, I tend to provoke a bit <clears throat> but yeah uh, so going back to the fundamentals uh i started like i said i actually used to be a pretty much a sales guy uh and that actually went well even though i i i I thought I, I, I wouldn't like it. Uh, and then I was in, in direct response marketing, which is basically sales. And, uh, it, and you know, we forget that what's marketing and we forget what's sales. Uh, for me, it's kind of the, you know, two, two sides of the same coin. And, uh, but if, if we wanna go a bit deeper, you know, if you're in marketing, you cannot just do performance-based things 
because <clears throat> you're just aiming at, at people who are ready to, to convert and you're leaving everyone, which is 90 to 99% of the rest of the world or, or your audience that are not ready to confirm, convert, uh, you're just, you know, uh, pretty much annoying them because most of the time you're, you're pushing for that sale. Uh, and uh, that leaves most, most people just annoyed or, or they, they'll just be indifferent to you. And, you know, marketing is, 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 uh, is something else. It's, it's, you know, spreading your story and presence uh, as far as you can and leaving a good impression on the people. And, you know, we, we tend to say that, you know, staying top of mind uh, to, to everyone and not just someone who's ready to click buy now or talk to sales. So, uh, yeah, uh, what was the second thing you asked me or? No idea, but let's get into <laughs> something else because I have a question. Yeah. Like, okay, listening to you and all the other things, uh, I remember that, you know, that when you started with content distribution, um, you guys were saying that you are, you know, like basically an SEO agency that's doing things differently and now developing a product as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but what are those things that you have done differently? I know you're creating a lot of content. So maybe, maybe we can dive into that and, you know, digest a little bit. Yeah, so I feel like there's, there's two uh, dimensions of, of that positioning. And one is what really is different about you. You know, uh, there's no real uh, positioning if, if your product or service is really the same as, as everyone out there. And then all you're left is the other dimension of positioning is how you package it. And, uh, you know, you can, you can have a lot of impact and a lot of perceived different positioning uh, if you do the packaging right. But I, I always tend to uh, push really hard uh, at really having that real positioning, uh, you know, to, to exist. And uh, in our agency, we, we do have that. And, uh, and it's basically, you know, pretty much going against uh, the grain in the entire SEO community. And we got a lot of hate for that. And, uh, but then, you know, we got a lot of praise for that as well. And we got a lot of uh, uh, demand and, and uh, success. So uh, basically what we do as an agency, SEO slash content agency, is we produce a lot of content, high quality content, and then we uh, aim to publish as much of it as possible in the short period of time, which is what we call uh, publishing velocity. And uh, we do no link building. We do little to no technical SEO and it's, it's, you know, just content. And, uh, when I was making a decision, whether I should join the, the company, uh, I, I probably wouldn't join the company if we were a link building agency or uh, PR slash 5,000 Forbes, $5,000 Forbes features and, and stuff like that. Cause that's, absolutely not exciting to me and often is is pretty scammy and most most agencies offer a deliverable you know here's an article here's a link here's a post here's a funnel uh and uh i think to to really learn the drill and really become the expert, you need to have that skin in the game and offer uh, outcomes as your service. You know, uh, I, I really love, for example, a great, great example of that is Jeremy Ellens from Lead Quizzes. Uh, he grew his agency to whatever, 700K a year uh, by offering just one thing to, to, to his clients. And that was in one year, we will build your email list to hundred thousand uh, subscribers. And, you know, that kind of uh, uh, positioning and that kind of, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, offer is something I'm, I'm way more excited about. And, you know, if I start an agency at some point, it's going to be something like that. So, yeah, that, that, that's one kind of a positioning, you know, the real thing, what you really do and how it really is different uh, than most people are out there. And then the other thing is obviously how you put positioning. We, we uh, generally aim to brand ourselves as the fat, fat graph folks and uh, fat graphs, meaning we take clients from, you know, little to no organic traffic and then we scale that curve to, to hundreds of thousands and even millions uh, organic uh, visits a month. So yeah, the, the, those are kind of the two things. And uh, I think you you basically ideally should be working on both the, the real thing and the packaging then. Yeah, I agree. That's a, that's a good, the good way of think. And I like the example, you know, no matter how, uh, you know, small or big it is, it's important that it's specific and that you are responsible for that. Like just yesterday, I was talking with a huge potential client and they were like, you know, uh can we make a pricing based on the results and it's because they worked with somebody before and you know they they have like 30 to 50 um k dollars uh as a monthly advertising budget and you know that's not a small amount to start with uh, and, you know, that's why they want to make sure the things are, you know, being done differently. And I mean, I'm still wondering how some people are actually doing those things without, you know, actually optimizing first and then investing that, uh, that amount of budget, you know, inside it. But it all depends. We are all doing things differently. So uh, who knows? But uh, it's one thing that causes insecurities in the clients because, we are doing things, uh, all of us things differently, and we are not, you know, securing them that, you know, we won't spend you more than, I don't know, one or 2000 before we optimize everything and we have the first results coming through the doors. Uh, so yeah, a little bit, uh, you know, different. And I think we need to change, to change the game so we can focus on those kind of stuff. So like the, the trust between the, um, companies and the vendors should uh, be back there because you know we do what are we hired for right man ethics are a big issue in, in our line of work and uh wherever you know uh whether i was consulting or when people reach out and ask for our services uh and you know all of us have those issues where you know uh, a potential client will talk about how they were let down by the previous vendor, how they don't believe in SEO or Facebook ads or whatever, uh, because, you know, they were let down because, you know, more and more people uh, just, you know, I, I think there's, there's a few issues with it. Uh, if I try to dissect it, it's, uh, it's offering a deliverable and not the outcome uh, because, you know, uh, a client will come for SEO, for example, and uh, the agency or a consultant will, will offer them, okay, I'll get you 10 articles and I will get you, uh, you know, 50 backlinks or whatever. And, you know, uh, it's easy to charge those services. It's easy to, to price those and you're winning in that game as a consultant or, or an agency. But the client isn't because it's never, uh, you know, five posts on LinkedIn won't get you anywhere. Why do you think 10 articles on your blog will or 50 backlinks won't get you anywhere either? And same thing with Facebook ads, you know, uh, or we, I, I try to hire an external agency for uh, outreach. And uh, basically they try to lock us in in a three month uh, you know, uh, contract and, uh, we were given no guarantees and, you know, I know the game, so I, I, I didn't hear anything that would, uh, you know, ease my mind or assure me that they know what they're doing. I asked them for case studies. They had none or 
weren't willing to share whatever but it's the same impression to me and you know i i obviously no deal happened and uh yeah i think uh there's there's uh there's a new movement happening in 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 marketing i'm i'm really new in the marketing space so i wouldn't know if if it's really new or or if it's just that i'm seeing it now but uh i think we can change these things and uh you know the other thing we all could do better uh is is be more transparent you know uh you won't run out of business if you share how and what you do uh and what your processes look like we had like hundreds maybe even thousands of dms asking us to do seo for us because we shared pretty much everything we 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 had to share uh pretty much you know left nothing uh <clears throat> untouched so yeah i th i think we can do uh a lot of about the ethics in our line of work and i think both you and i and and some other good people uh seem to be doing a good job with it and i i, I hope more and more people jump that train it's good for your business good for the you know the entire business and uh and for the mark marketing reputation in, in general so hopefully some good movements will keep happening there yeah yeah i totally agree so uh, let's uh, let's demystify another thing uh so like growth or head of growth is is basically the new the new uh, position inside the company it was there just with another name uh for a long time but let's talk a little bit about what it means in, in your case because you are the one coming from a different background i mean i would say like doing the copywriting also makes you a marketer even if you don't agree uh but you had different kind of experience you know direct response copywriting a bit of sales a bit of content writing so different different experience and you came to the company where the founder was the marketeer, right? Somebody who is oh, yeah. doing SEO and those kind of things. I know Nick from from uh, from Facebook communities uh, for a few years now. Uh, and so, how was that? Like uh, coming to the company to do marketing, where the the founder is actually marketing. The company does, you know, marketing stuff. When you look at it like that. Yeah, so uh, I think there's two two things we should talk about. One is the meta uh, thing, and then one is specific. The the meta thing, the meta topic here is uh, I I had an internal discussion with myself. Uh, I was about to you know get promoted, and uh, when you're an, at an early stage company, you know it's funny, but uh, you often get to pick your title. Uh, and it's not constrained by the existing hierarchy and you get to build one. And uh, I was thinking, uh, like I just said two minutes ago, you know, I think aiming and, and, and building everything around outcomes is, is very important and going for the deliverable is a wrong way to do it. And uh and we also talked about you know the difference between sales and marketing and unique roles each has uh and uh i had the option to you know be head of marketing or director of marketing or whatever uh and uh i choose to go with uh, growth because i want to be in charge and responsible for uh creating growth of our company uh, or more specifically our SaaS business, uh, but agency as well. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like it's, uh, I feel like you are uh, already putting constraints on you if you decide that you will create growth through marketing. I don't care how we create growth. I mean, obviously, uh, I'm not referring to sketchy, <laughs> doing sketchy things and, you know, whatnot. But uh, I don't care what channel we use. I, I don't care what uh, tactics and strategies we use. Uh, my goal is to achieve growth 
and uh, whether it's more sales led or product led, I have you know strong opinions about that. But to me, uh, your role should indicate your desired uh, outcomes, and I try to achieve that with you know head of growth because I'll be managing our sales team, uh, I'll be managing our uh, you know outreach, but also you know demand gen, uh, some way of managing SEO. I luckily have some badass SEOs on the team, so uh, I don't have to manage that uh, tightly. So yeah, when it comes to the meta discussion around it, I think you know uh, I, I uh, decided to to be a head of growth rather than head of marketing because I don't want to just do marketing. I want to be involved as much as possible and responsible for growth. And I think one of the ways to reinforce that idea is to put a title accordingly. Uh, and then the other specific discussion about our, uh, our team structure and, uh, and yeah, it's, uh, you know, most of the marketers have that issue and it's uh, becoming a meme uh, nowadays, you know, CEOs that don't get marketing and I sympathize and I, I feel that pain. I had, had those myself, but uh, it's it's a way better situation right now because my uh, CEO is uh, uh, you know a marketer. Uh, he was a director of marketing at a pretty big company and, and so on. So it's way easier to to survive as a marketer on a team where CEO does get marketing. Uh, and I, I I hope I never end up being <clears throat> again in the position of a marketer uh, where the CEO doesn't get it. Uh, and uh, and yeah, uh, I think I forgot now again. Yeah, you were talking about meta and now you wanted to get into into more, you know, details. Yeah, so it's, you know, still early. It's still a pretty lean team. Uh, on the SaaS side, we have more than 50 people on the agency side. So it's kind of two businesses at once. So it's kind of... Uh, I guess more complex than a usual SaaS business would have it, uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, we'll still still see how how things develop, uh, but uh, the idea is to have sales and marketing under one roof, and uh, to make that you know uh, that tough relationship that is generally present in in uh, in our business to make it as smooth as possible and uh and you know one of the things we we aim to do to to make that happen is you know when you hire your first salesperson there's always a talk about the commission and quotas and my idea that nick nick uh, uh supported was let's not have those let's not have commission based reps let's have team goals so the entire team that includes both sales and marketing has the same quarterly or yearly goal. And, you know, we, we get some, you know, royalty or, or a percentage of new revenue generated as a, a bonus. And then we are all incentivized to work together and towards the outcome and not measure us individually, because, you know, especially, my idea with sales is not to do the usual cold calling, emailing and all that stuff. My idea is, you know, to, to similar to what Chris Walker preaches, you know, have uh, SDRs also create content and, and demand on their own. And, you know, we have such a strong inbound machine that, you know, how, how will we, how will we the fuck attribute uh, uh, a conversion to a sales uh, demo when everything we do is is aimed at creating inbound demand. Uh, so, you know, to fix those issues, we decided to go with team goals. Uh, the idea is to have sales and marketing aligned and to host them under the same roof. And, you know, if we lose, you lose. If we win, uh, everyone wins. So. Uh, that's the that's the game plan, and uh, I think I feel it's kind of a new thing. I, I I wonder if 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 that makes sense because to me it doesn't make sense. Uh, but we'll see what 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 happens.
Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting and it's logical thinking. Uh, but in a way, what I can see the issues, because um, I've been in a part of the teams that were measured by team success, is that only a few people will create the results. Others will just, you know, get on get on the board on board with that and just you know go with the flow yeah so but that's, that's always you know something to think about yeah Pareto's rule of distribution 80 20 yeah that that's that's unfortunately I think always the case uh my my goal is to build a lean team you know a small team and uh you know if I was the one making this, this a decision I would never scale beyond a certain you know number of people in the team uh revenue goals and stuff like that because i've worked in corporate environments and in enterprise businesses and i personally don't like that and you know every corporation has uh, a lifespan and it's usually 20 to 30 years that's just you know scientific fact or a stat and uh, I think you can go beyond those sad statistics when you build a, a lean team that's pretty much a family. And, and you know, uh, same as you would go into the wilderness and create a self-sustainable, you know, community. I think you can do the same with business and, you know, have your solar panels and uh, create your own food uh as as a you know a small company uh specific, specifically SaaS. yeah yeah i love i love the comparison uh i'm even doing a tattoo on like the forest the river the, some animals and everything else like related to that uh but uh yeah so tell me tell me one thing i love what you, what you shared uh and thanks for for doing that um here a question so so you are uh creating a lot of content and uh, from looking at your website, I know that you have like, you know, articles that are free to read, some case studies, but you also have the option, you know, to, to for uh, people reading it to download the files. So tell me a little bit about that. Why did you decide to go with, with that model? Because, you know, we are all the time talking about gating or ungating. I'm, I'm a fan of, of what you are doing and uh, trying to implement that as we are creating the new website for us as well. Because, uh, you know, people can read, but a lot of them wants to, you know, wants to take their time and, you know, have that file available somewhere when they can read it, even if they are online, offline, or they're, you know, like on their phone somewhere else, or they're within their desktop in the quietness of their office and, you know, no distractions uh, around it. Yeah, the infamous uh, to gate or not to gate uh, discussion. So yeah, uh, I, I think you know, common sense will will help you with whatever you do. And for me, common sense is don't gate content, gate resources. Uh, and an example is you know I'm reading a post about uh, how to write a landing page, let's say, and. Uh, you know content is good that's a first you know uh, requirement you need to have uh content is good and i'm enjoying the article and then somewhere halfway through it uh i get a an inline uh a, a opt-in or a slide in or a, even a pop-up doesn't matter really uh and uh and i'm being asked Okay, so you seem to be enjoying this article. Do you want nine uh, or a single best performing, best converting landing page template? And then, you know, I'm reading about writing a landing page. I could definitely use uh, a template that's, you know, the highest converting template these guys have. So uh, when it's, uh, uh, for example, click Chris Wan Wilpert calls it a content upgrade. I call it gated resources. Uh, doesn't matter what you call it, but basically it's uh, something on top of the content, uh, not not something that's you know uh, that will 
you know kill the vibe of your content consumption consumption like like uh, a lot of uh, media outlets now do you know uh you get to their website and then you can read first two paragraphs and then bam you gotta subscribe to read the rest of it that's a horrible experience and that's like you won't see that person visit uh your stuff again so yeah i think you shouldn't gate content and you should only get resources that are like a, an upgrade after reading uh consuming the content and for us it's working really well uh i think we are converting around 28 percent of all the website visitors into email subscribers or free trials or some sort of mql let's let's call it that way uh, but then also i think it's important uh you know you need to figure out those resources very uh, well because that's that's what's gonna tell you the intent of of the of that person you know if you if you give them something random like even even if you ask them you know subscribe to my newsletter that's that's uh not telling you anything if someone down, downloads an seo roi calculator that means that they are working with clients or they are thinking of working with clients uh thinking of working with vendors so they are actively doing what what uh you know seo and uh, then that's a whole different conversation and then you know what kind of content they will further want to get uh if you use email marketing as a, a content distribution channel like we do uh but then also if you want to treat them like a lead and and, and send uh you know nurture them uh which i don't like uh but uh if you do that it's still a way better option because those leads are going to be way more qualified so yeah uh to wrap it up yeah uh don't gate content gate resources that's how so, I, uh, a, a question so you are not having like a, a nurture sequence after they download i don't know like a case study or an ebook or something like that. and when i say nurture sequence i mean extending more on the topics you know, uh, giving them examples, giving them maybe testimonials, the way you have done, you know, things for also other clients in that way, that, that's how I see like the, the follow-up sequences. Yeah, uh, when I say a nurture sequence, I usually mean the best practices, you know, uh, which is basically, you know, a follow-up and trying to stay relevant, which is usually just sending that email uh, every other day or every week or whatever and uh you know most emails i consume in my inbox are just ah, disappointing and i i just try to do better than that uh so my my main idea when we are doing the email nurturing or whatever we we do have you know uh, a sequence that's aimed at converting free trial users to paying users and then retaining paying users into you know uh, for as long as possible and, and stuff like that or converting leads into free trials email subscribers into trials stuff like that but my my number one goal and, and, and idea when doing that when writing those emails and design the how the entire thing looks like it's uh how can i be of most help to this person so i need to understand what they are looking for uh, they tend to tell that by download, downloading or opting in here or there, uh, or you know uh, through content uh, consumption. When you know what kind of what what pages they visit, that tells you a lot uh, of context. But yeah, my, my my main idea is how can I help them get from where they are to the next level. I mean, I know uh, this sounds like a coach, but. Uh, uh, but yeah, that's that's the you know user experience is my main thing, uh, and uh, I I I view it as my job then to you know show them as much of the content that we have that's useful for their use case, and uh, and you know it's working really well. Uh, it's little to no uh, direct response tactics tactics you know you know buy this. Uh, stuff like that uh, or sign up or whatever it's mostly you know 
more of the content, more of the content marketing vibe. Uh, hey, I think you'll find this useful because da 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 da. And we always lead by an example. Like this, this is what this did for us. And then here's the outcome. Uh, to get there, we did this and that. Here's this part of that strategy explained in detail for you. So you know, I think I think uh, when your goal is when your number one goal is to uh, really be that uh, Santa's little hel helper for your uh, for your uh, audience, for your customer or prospect. I think there's no way you can you can do wrong. Yeah, I agree. So uh, to sum it up, basically what you, what you said is uh, you know get to know your customers or clients, uh, help them uh, fulfill their goals. Mm -hmm. show the case studies of how you help them get the new ones and continue to grow by creating customer centric content and better experience for them. Right. Yeah. It's all a, a big loop. Uh, you do the same thing over again and, uh, and it just keeps compounding and, uh, and yeah, you, you're, I mean, the, the biggest compounding effect of, of any kind of marketing you can do is just uh, making uh, one person at a time, you know, feel good about you, feel good about that interaction you had. So, you know, uh, wh wh whether you're gonna give them a resource, show them what the process looks like, invite them to a podcast, chat with them in, in, in DMs, uh, like their content, support them, you know, whatever works best for you, pick one of those and just do that at, at, at scale, ideally. And, you know, that's the biggest compounding effect to any marketing strategy. Yeah. Thanks, man. I think that was that was great. Um, anything that we missed that you want to say for the end? I think that's all. Uh, we can we can talk about this forever and we will do next time we see each other outside Zoom and, and, uh, and on Zoom as well. Uh, but yeah, keep, keep doing the good work. Uh, I'm, I'm not always uh, the enthusiastic guy, but I think we can you know, uh, move things uh, in, in, in a good direction if, if more of us uh, you know, keep ethics important and keep outcomes important over deliverables. Sounds good. Uh, so many gems inside the, the conversation, guys. Uh, I think this is this will be the episode where we will go back and uh, you know focus on specific uh, parts of the conversations. Ognin, tell tell the people where they can find you. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, Nemanja, you'll have to link to my profile because no one is gonna get the spelling of my name right. Uh, but you can also uh, check out strongerteams.com slash marketing. That's where my uh, newsletter uh, hangs out. And uh, you'll get some good content there. It's all in the spirit of what I talked about today. So it, it should be a good delivery. Yeah, thanks. Uh, guys, trust Ognin. It's a good content. I'm already starting to see people talking about it on, on LinkedIn sharing some conclusions and you know he's definitely starting some topics uh from that newsletter so uh i advise you to to be on it you know he's always referring to dave gerhardt as one of the guys who is subscribed to the to the newsletter so uh if uh Ognien or me are not enough dg is here as well uh so uh yeah, thanks for thanks for being here. Thanks for being on the show. And uh, you know, follow follow Ognien, follow content distribution, subscribe to his uh, to his newsletter, and you know, make sure you say hi, say that you have listened to the Funky Marketing Show. That's how you get to know him, and uh, you know, start the relationship. That's uh, that's the, the the end goal of everything. And helps with the attribution even. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Bye-bye, yeah, guys. Thanks for having me. See you, guys.